Yeah. Hey y'all, what is up? And welcome back to my channel for another part of the Sims 3 to Sims 4 series where we are recreating the Sims 3 families from Twinbrook and their homes in the Sims 4. So today we are recreating the Bayless family, which so far I've had so much fun with this family and their house. As you'll see in a minute, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but like I love how their house turned out and I just love how different this family is. But their family description says... The origins of the Bayless name are a bit hard to track down. Written records were legible even two generations back. Use the less L E S S list L I S S or even L I E S suffix varietals. Varietals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What? <laughs> Debt prison records from 1788 list one Philippe Bay. List le, what <laughs> Philippe Baylist as a catfish thief and chronic reneg reneger. Oh my gosh! Like wow, they're confusing. <laughs> but lineage is circumstantial at best, and like little Chase says, why y'all cares about apostrophes? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you could understand any of what that meant that I just said, but I will put their family description in the description box down below so you can read it. But anyways, they're a really cute little family. They live in the marshland, which is one of the little neighborhoods in Twinbrook. You know, I've mentioned in previous parts where there's just like different little neighborhoods. So they live like in the marsh area where it's like very country and backwoods looking. It's very swampy. Uh, it kind of looks like the bayou or something. But anyways, uh, the family seems to be very outdoorsy and very close knit. And as the biography kind of gave it away, some focus is placed on the origins of the family and the end game biography as well as Gwaine's Bayless biography, tend to suggest that the family has been quite hard to track down over generations, and no information exists in the family tree of any family member to show any relatives. And Gwaine's bio also hits hints at potential inbreeding by indicating that anyone who tries to track down the family line is only led in circles. However, this might simply indicate poor record keeping, which, given the suggestion of the tendency to forget to pay bills and theft, could be deliberate. So, yes. <laughs> uh, they're a very interesting family, but... Anyways, the family consists of Skeet Bayless, his wife, Gwaine Bayless, and their teenage daughter, Chase Bayless and their son Tate Bayless. So, a little bit about Skeet, which <laughs> apparently that is a very inappropriate name. So, when I was creating him and I went to, you know, save the family, it said this name is not appropriate or some name or something isn't appropriate. And I was like, okay, it's got to be Skeet. <laughs> I mean, what else? So, his name originally is spelled. S-K-E-E-T, but I just added an E at the end, so the game wouldn't think that I was being, like, a pervert. <laughs> so, his name is spelled different in The Sims 4, but that's just, like, the only way I can do it. But, anyways, <clears throat> he is an adult, and his biography states that Skeet's smarter than your average Riverlands inhabitant. From the garage door in the kitchen to spray paint in the family truck and camouflage, this guy's a true to life util utilar huh? utilitarian, 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 whatever. <laughs> he claims it's just <laughs> his good old fashioned survival skills. So in The Sims 3, he was employed at the graveyard. Um, so, unfortunately, we don't have that career in The Sims 4. So, um, I don't really know what job I'm going to give him yet. At this point, I haven't went into the game and given them their careers or anything yet. I don't know if I'm going to have him just kind of like work off the land. Maybe like sell some stuff, scavenge around. I don't know if I'll make him, you know, something in the gardening career. 
I don't know, just let me know. Well, actually, I'll probably have already decided by the time I ask you guys to let me know. <laughs> but I'm, I'll figure it out. But anyways, his personality is he's a slob, absent-minded, loves the outdoors, family-oriented angler, and his lifetime wish is to be surrounded by family. And he has a wife, and her name is Gwen. Uh, which I think I'm pronouncing that right. I was like, is it Gwen or is it G Wayne? <laughs> but I think it's Gwen. And her biography states that despite her charming city like personality, Gwen was actually born in the Riverlands. The family lineage is a bit murky, and anyone who has ever tried to track it down has only been led in circles. So her career is she is a freelance writer, so even though she's like very outdoorsy looking just like the rest of her family she apparently has like this city like mannerism about her which is interesting um so that might be why she's kind of like into journalism i don't know i just don't really see her as being a journalist or anything because that just kind of strikes me as something of the city <laughs> but nonetheless she is a freelance writer and her personality is she is brave she loves the outdoors she's family oriented she's a daredevil she's an angler and her lifetime wish is to present the perfect private aquarium so apparently she likes to fish and collect as many fish as she can but uh anyways <laughs> that's interesting moving on to their daughter chase so I really like her name. I like when girls have boy names, like unisex names. I just think that's really cool. So anyways, Chase is a girl and she is a teenager. And her biography states that Chase has come a long way since being called daddy's girl in elementary school. However, it's debatable whether she's changed or if it's because more people have realized it's actually her mother she's more like. So she doesn't have like a relationship status or anything um i don't think she's in a relationship with him but she does have a romantic interest in jeffrey castor which we'll get to him eventually um so they're not like boyfriend and girlfriend or anything i think they're just like really good friends and they kind of have a crush on each other um, but her personality is that she is a loner, she loves the outdoors, she's family oriented, and she is an angler. So that's interesting because she is very outdoorsy like the rest of her family. Um, and she's very much into fishing, living off the land, stuff like that. Just because that's how she's been raised, which, you know, she's very much, you know, daddy's girl growing up because she'd go fishing with him and, you know, work out in the yard with him. But as she grows up, people are starting to say that she's changing. But, you know, like her biography states, she actually may just be more like her mom in the fact that, you know, she's a little bit more of a loner. She kind of has like these bigger dreams than just being an outdoors woman. I don't want to say outdoors man, outdoors woman or something like that. Um, I don't know what kind of like career path I could see her following, but I think it'd be really cool to download her and like this family and just kind of see where her life takes her and maybe she will move away from the country and, you know, outdoors life and maybe move to the city or the suburbs or something. I don't know. That's just my thought. But she does have a little brother and his name is Tay. And his biography says, Tay's general dislike for school began with a spat over apostrophes in kindergarten. If he finishes elementary school this year or next, it will be by his parents' sheer force of will. So his personality is he loves the outdoors, he's family-oriented, and he's an angler. So he reminds me of, like, I, I don't even know. I, I, I can't think of, like, one person that he reminds me of, but just, like, movies where the, like, older movies <laughs> where the kids are just, like, very country and very southern and I don't want to go to school. You can't make me go to school, you know. He's very, uh, I guess you would say, like, independent. He kind of wants to be like his dad. So, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't give Skeet 
a job. Maybe he could just be like a savage man and just kind of savage around. And I did give him like a handiness table in the backyard. So maybe he likes to, you know, make stuff and kind of sell it. And that's how he makes his living. So Tay's kind of like, oh, I want to be like my dad. I don't have to go to school. Because I definitely can imagine that Skeet probably dropped out in like middle school. <laughs> that's just kind of the vibe that I get. But anyways... They're a cute family, right? They're just different. They have, like, big personalities, which is a lot of fun to play. But like I said at the beginning of this video, their house quickly has become, like, my favorite house that I've recreated so far for this specific neighborhood, or rural Twinbrook. I just had so much fun with it. Um, obviously, in The Sims 3, it's very, like, foggy and swampy, but we don't have much of a rural that kind of like fits that aesthetic so the closest that i could get to that was over on the countryside of windenburg and their house kind of looks like i mean it's actually a pretty big house uh but it kind of reminds me of like it's not a shed because it's big i don't even know how to explain what i'm trying to say but i just love it it's got so much personality and i did add like a little pond in the front yard because like i said they do live like on the swamp so in the original sims 3 you can see like the pond and like swamp and like little weaves its way around their property so i gave that to them in the front yard i tried to you know make it look really overgrown and swampy so i used that grass and like sized it up and put it all around and i love how it turned out i think it is really cute i don't know if that's like appropriate like that's cute like a swamp but it's cute i like how it turned out <laughs> And, of course, in The Sims 3, we had vehicles, and they had, like, a camouflage truck. <laughs> they all kind of wear, like, camouflage, and, like, the interior of their home is very camouflage. But, anyways, instead of, like, giving them an actual truck, well, we don't have, like, actual trucks, but y'all know what I'm talking about, the trucks, toy trucks that you size up. I gave them the debug object or the hidden object that came with Strangerville, which is the car rundown truck part. And I kind of put the grass over it and made it look overgrown. I just imagined that their house would kind of be very junky. And so maybe this is like an old truck that Skeet has been meaning to work on, but he's a little bit preoccupied with, you know, all of his other work that he's doing around the house and in the yard and stuff. But anyways in the backyard i also gave them an rv just because they are like sportsmen people not sportsmen wrong outdoorsmen <laughs> i imagine that they have a camper they don't ever like really go camping in it which is kind of like old and worn down probably infested with like rats and probably don't want to go in there they probably just kind of use it as like storage <laughs> where they store all of their stuff that they don't need anymore which is why it's kind of like run down but anyways <laughs> the back porch is my favorite part of this house it reminds me so much of where i'm from <laughs> uh I, I th we go to the hunting club or hunting camp a lot i am from the south and you know i'm a pretty country person but anyways down here as well as up north and everywhere you know you like to go hunting except like down here we don't spend like big money to shoot big game you know <clears throat> you pay money to be a member of a hunting camp and you go and you hang out up there on the weekends but anyways the hunting camp that we're a part of it's got like a big old back porch like this it's got like couches and big screen tv so we can watch football games uh grills and stuff like that so i had a lot of fun creating the back porch and decorating it it's definitely my favorite part of the house but Nonetheless, like I said, the house is very interesting, but it's like not small. It's pretty big, and it was just a lot of fun to decorate. Didn't think I was going to really know what to do with it, but it came pretty natural and came pretty easy, except I did cut out a huge chunk, a huge chunk of me struggling with the roof because in The Sims 3 version of their house, they have 
like the stairs that lead up and then there's like a balcony that overlooks down into the living room and then the children's room is upstairs and a bathroom so I was able to recreate that but I couldn't figure it out <laughs> I struggled so much with it it was kind of pissing me off I didn't think that I was going to be able to build it but you know, roofing just comes not natural to me like it it's probably common sense to some people but it takes me a hot minute to figure out how to make the roofing work in the sims 4 uh I don't know it's just it's aggravating <laughs> But anyways, I figured it out and I was able to have like the balcony upstairs and you can look down into the living room. But of course, there's like no window view or nothing um, overlooking, you know, the front yard or anything. It's just like a roof. So, you know, if you go into like tab mode, you'll probably see it looks a little weird. But there was nothing else I can do at that point. But I did give them the balcony overlooking down into the living room, which is pretty cool. But anyways, we are on to the interior of the house, which, you know, go me. I've done a good job at just doing my rambling and talking throughout the first half of this video. Which, you know, these Sims 3 to Sims 4 series aren't that bad because I'm able to kind of talk about the family and read their biography and go into, like, the family history and everything. But... Maybe I won't struggle too bad since I did have so much fun building this house. Um, and you see right here, I'm putting uh, like the the ripped wallpaper look. And I, then I kind of thought about it. I, I made the wood walls, which wood is okay, it's not like wallpaper. So you'll see me kind of like, oh, that probably doesn't even make a lot of sense. And I end up changing that and kind of putting more like scratch buff like where it kind of looks like the walls have been like scratched or something i'll do that later though but anyways like i said earlier their house is pretty spacious so when you walk in it's very much open floor concept you see the dining room and then there's like a really big living room area and then there's um in the sims 3 it was the little what do you call those like the little indoor like firewood okay not a fireplace but you know like the little stove things fire st why can't i think of them like my grandparents have one we all know what i'm talking about <laughs> but we don't have that in the sims 4 so i just put that fireplace in there and i put over there a bookshelf and then i did give Gwen a little desk area since she is in the journalism career and I tried to like clutter it up later with some stuff that kind of looks like, you know, that's her little work area. But as far as like the living room goes, um, they don't, or throughout their house in general, they don't have like the most updated uh, electronics. Mostly because, you know, they're more into being outside. I don't think that they spend a lot of time... You know, sitting down in the living room watching TV. I think Gwen gets on her computer to work and that's about it. And as you saw when I did the backyard and the porch, they have a lot of activities out there. So I think that's definitely where they spend most of their time. I put like a little horseshoe game out there for them to play. And then of course, you know, I'm sure Skeet spends the majority of the time on his porch. Um, <laughs> he has this little word looking work woodworking bench out there and he probably cooks out there they probably eat out there and just hang out there and sit around on the back porch and look off into the country and just you know bond because they're a very close-knit family so for the interior of their house i didn't want it to look like you know they have a ton of appliances and or not appliances electronics <sighs> so yeah <laughs> and as far as like the furnishing goes I didn't want it to be like super matchy. I wanted it to kind of um, look like they kind of built a lot of the stuff themselves. So I tried to find like the furniture that is kind of more rustic looking. Um, despite how like expensive it is for example that grandfather clock right there is pretty expensive. But I just liked how rustic it looked. 
and I imagine, like I said, with Skeet being outside all the time with his woodworking bench, I imagine that he probably builds a lot of their furniture so that little, um, well, probably, okay, take that back, probably not the little love seat bench, wooden bench there, because that's really nice, but throughout the rest of the house, you'll see certain little end tables and benches. I think I gave the bar stools in the kitchen, um, the... The ratchet ones, okay, ratchet, I don't even know if that's the right word, but it's like he tried to build it, like, it just doesn't look like the best quality. He has to really work on his handiness skill a little bit, but anyways, I just love it. I don't know why, it was so much fun just thinking about him being that outdoorsman dad that just, you know, is always, I don't think that they have a garden, so I didn't give them a garden because they didn't have a garden in The Sims 3 because they actually live on a swamp. And I don't think that that's like the best land for a garden. So I definitely don't see him being like a gardener. But just like fishing and selling his fish for money. Mounting his fish like I said. And probably just building a bunch of stuff and selling it. So I don't think if I was to play him... But it's completely up to you if you want to download this family. I don't think I'd give him a career. I think it'd be a lot of fun just to like kind of play with him and see what he comes up with to make money for his family. But anyways, I did put like the little gaming table on that back wall because like I said, it's very spacious. And I was trying to come up with things so it, there wasn't like a ton of extra space. Um, but I didn't put out the llama what well, don't wait the llama or card game you can you switch it out for either one so i definitely see them you know doing that as well inside rather than watching a lot of tv and then i did give them um a pet dog little uh bed and kind of like indication that they have a pet which of course in the sims 3 they are part of twinbrook which didn't come with pets it was that pets yeah pets came after ambitions ambitions in the sims 3 was the first expansion pack that we got so we didn't have pets yet but i definitely for sure see this family having a dog probably a big dog or a few <laughs> so i think that they would definitely adopt a dog so i didn't create a dog for the family but i imagine that they would have one so you'll see you know kind of looks like a dog might live here as well but anyways moving on to the kitchen which the kitchen surprisingly was very fun the whole house was fun but the kitchen was fun it was different i've never done anything like that but um in the sims 3 and kind of like in his description said biography Skeet has, for some reason, a garage door <laughs> from the porch into the kitchen. So, I used that uh, garage door and I had to size it down so it would fit. <laughs> and also, they're kind of like one of those families that I, I can imagine. Well, I don't really want to say like they prepare for the apocalypse or anything. But, they store a lot of food and they're very much into like couponing and bargaining and just finding all the food that they can so I did give their you know food rack or whatever and kind of like pushed it in that corner and I don't know I just love how rustic and industrial this house looks and over there by the microwave that cabinet I actually like brought it down you could raise it up but I thought it looked really cool to like bring it down and then put the um original cabinet above it if that makes sense but anyways <clears throat> I think it looked really cool and I love how it turned out and because it was so big I was like okay hmm, what am I going to do because the dining room is like in the other room the entryway so I put a table in the middle and I was going to clutter it up a lot but I didn't put too much on it because I just felt like you know sometimes it's just too much too 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 much so I didn't clutter it up a lot but I did put those bar stools that I talked about I could imagine that um, Skeet made himself so like they're not the best quality but I did give them you know like their appliances and everything they're not like the most expensive and the best and I did give them a dog bowl and everything 
as if they would have a dog. But anyways, I love the way the kitchen came together. I gave them a coffee pot because, you know, Gawain, she is the one that kind of, you know, works. And I imagine that she would have late nights over there at her computer, you know, doing her journalism work and whatnot. So she's probably a coffee drinker for sure. But, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this house so far, this build. Like I said, it was so much fun. So much fun. Uh, I've, I haven't had this much fun yet, like, in the Twin Brook series, which this whole series, I say it all the time, is so much fun. But this one just flowed. It came so easy for me. And maybe it's because I'm from the country and I this is just familiar to me <laughs> but anyways this is the master bedroom so this bedroom belongs to skeet and Gwen. and i used the bedding that came with oh my gosh i can never remember what that pack is the go camping get outdoors <laughs> outdoor retreat there you go right outdoor retreat is that it yeah anyways i used that bed just because it kind of looked very rusticy and whatnot and the bathroom that's downstairs is kind of like an ensuite so y'all know i say this all the time i really don't like floor plans where downstairs there's not a bathroom accessible to your guests without having to go through your bedroom but you can go straight upstairs and there's a bathroom upstairs that the kids share so that would probably be where the guests would go to the bathroom i don't know i take this game way too seriously it's like it's a game chris like why does it aggravate me when my sim neighbors come up in my house and walk through my bedroom to use my ensuite bathroom when they can use any other bathroom in the house why does it bother me so much i have no idea you tell me but i just take it way too serious sometimes and it's a problem but anyways in their bedroom i kind of cluttered it up a little bit as you can see um i put the little guitar where it looks like somebody crafted it themselves there you go <laughs> like i said i imagine skeet you know, being like that. And I, I was going to use that end table like he built it too. But I ended up switching it out for that makeshift hamper there. I kind of wish I would have kept. Yeah, definitely kind of wish I would have kept the little end table. Just because it added that personality to Skeet. And I also gave him on his little dresser there. Kind of cluttered it up. And gave him the little map thing that came with. I think it was the get rid, get outdoor. Get rid. <laughs> what is that pack called outdoor retreat there you go where it's like he's very outdoorsy so it's like a map of maybe a campsite or something i don't know i imagine that this family goes camping a lot <sighs> but anyways moving on to their bathroom this bathroom is pretty big so i was able to kind of clutter it up a lot and as you saw earlier, the laundry stuff is outside on the back porch. That's how it was in The Sims 3. So they do have a washer and dryer out there on the back porch. And then also they have like a clothes hanger, clothes dryer thing. What? Why can I never think of what that thing is called? Anyway, it's in their backyard. Uh, but in their bathroom here, I gave them, as you'll see in just a second, the uh the shelf that came with laundry day with like the little like of uh, what a, like baskets like decoration baskets or whatever right there and i just put like some laundry stuff on it and you know just kind of like cluttered it up a little bit because i wanted to kind of have like some laundry stuff but i didn't like want to put their laundry out on the back porch which i mean <laughs> Like I said, it's a game. I'm thinking, oh my God, somebody's going to steal their clothes. No, they're not. <laughs> That's just me and the way I think when I play The Sims. I take it too serious. But anyways, upstairs, this is like a really cool part of the house. Because like I said, they have the little balcony that overlooks down into the living room. Which I think is really, really cool. 
and this is where Chase and Tay's bedroom is and I did go in and give them closets because I love to do that it just kind of takes up space and it's a little bit more realistic but anyways um for Tay's bedroom I kind of went with like a red theme because she is wearing like a camouflage jacket and like I said earlier kind of talking about her personality she is very much into the outdoors and that's just the way she was raised but at the same time she's kind of like her mom and I gave her like a desk area and I did give her a computer I gave her a laptop I believe and I did give her the like abandoned one so it's kind of like I said I didn't want to give them the best electronics or they really spend a lot of money because I definitely don't think Skeet would spend a lot of money even though they're not like super poor or anything their house is very nice to be this like uh rustic <laughs> um but I don't think that he would be the type to spend a lot of money on electronics. So I gave her the abandoned one, which turns out in the buy mode is actually more expensive than the other laptop that came with StrangerVille. So that's interesting. But anyways, I did want to give her a laptop since she is a teenager and she's kind of like exploring and discovering who she is she probably gets on there and like chats a lot maybe she is wanting to follow in her mom's footsteps and be a writer or something journalist I don't know but I put a bunch of posters around her room and I love that little um, little doll thing what's that called my sim dolls what are they called I can't think of it but it reminds me of Harry Potter for some reason and I just feel like that's something that she'd be into so I put that there on her desk and there's the laptop that I gave her and just kind of cluttered up like the the poster board with like some postcards maybe she has a pen pal or something since she kind of does live like supposedly in the swamp bio bi bio bayou area uh, maybe she doesn't like have a well maybe she's not very popular I don't see her being very popular so I do imagine that she would probably have some pen pals um, and use her computer to kind of like socialize with different sims and maybe that's what would inspire her to maybe get out of the town she grew up in and kind of like see you know what life is actually all about outside of her you know little box <laughs> that she kind of grew up in um but yes that is her room i think it turned out pretty cute and moving on to tay's room his room has a ton of clutter in it but you know that's why yeah you know teen rooms and kid rooms are my favorite to furnish because it just looks so cute when you clutter it up but once again i get so sick of the same clutter items it's not even funny <laughs> so i did give him um like a very kid kiddish looking room um i imagine that like i said he is not into school he's definitely doesn't want to go be like a surgeon or anything i gave him a scout sport because he's a big outdoorsman wants to follow in his father's footsteps so i imagine he'd definitely be a part of scouts and he would work really hard at earning all of his badges and having all the skills like if he worked that hard in school as he does in boy scouts his grades would probably be a lot better but probably the fact that club scouts is the only thing that's keeping him in school i know his biography said it's his parents force that's keeping him in there but as probably the scouting that he really enjoys i definitely see him enjoying that but i did give him a little desk as well i didn't give him a computer or anything like that i just wanted him to have like a little place to you know not do his homework because he's not into that but <laughs> maybe like draw pictures and stuff and you know clutter just put junk on probably um, and I gave him a little frog I gave Chase a little fish tank over there you probably saw that I ended up switching out <clears throat> some of the clutter on her bedside table and giving her a little fish tank and I gave him the frog because they are an outdoorsy family and I realized I didn't really 
give them a lot of critters in their house, which I imagine they would have a lot of. Like, out on the back porch, now that I'm thinking about it, it probably would have been really cool if I would have put some of those, you know, little cages or aquariums with the different bugs in it. But you can definitely do that when you have them, you know, out doors or camping they kind of collect it and bring it home and clutter it up in their house but I did end up giving him a little pet frog um, and he could probably in the future have like a pet rat or something too I definitely see that happening but I didn't have room or anything in his room for that and I didn't want to put you know a, a pet rat <laughs> in the hallway or anything like that but here is their bathroom upstairs that they both share it's pretty much similar to their parents' bathroom. Um, and then in the hallway up there, I don't really do much because mm, there's just not a lot of room. I just, just didn't clutter it up that much. By the time I get to like the, <laughs> the hallways upstairs, the landings or whatever, in case you guys haven't noticed, is usually the last thing I do. And at that point, I'm kind of over it and I don't clutter it up a ton. But, you know, I did try to decorate it a little bit. But, in two ways, this build is wrapping up. So, if you enjoyed it and you enjoyed this family and you want to download them, they are going to be available for download on the gallery. So, make sure you subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up, and, yeah, stay tuned for more. Love y'all, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Send her my home.